lockdown lift up welcome and today's topic is going to be how to overcome procrastination and i love this conversation i love this topic because it's something that i struggle with and i am constantly using the techniques and tools that i'm going to share with you today so uh super happy that you're here we do this every monday through thursday at 3 15 p.m eastern and basically, I just pick a topic. I'd love to hear your topic ideas. So by all means, put them in the comments. And uh, I just riff on it for, you know, between 10 and 20-ish minutes. And uh, that's that's how this works. <laughs> this is it. And some days you get me in a ponytail. I've uh, And some days you get me all dolled up because I've just finished a virtual keynote. Uh, whatever the case may be, this is your time with Ali G. Which, I'm sorry, that rhymed. <laughs> I, I won't say that again, I don't think. I, I don't think that's going to be my new mantra. Whatever the case may be, you're here with Ali G. Anyhow, I'm procrastinating on the topic of getting to procrastination. And so the fun thing we're going to do with this topic today is we're actually going to, in a very abbreviated version of it, apply my problem-solving framework to procrastination. So the way this works is often we go to solution first thinking when we're trying to solve an obstacle or, and specifically, I talk a lot about barriers to performance. These are anything that are the habits or the approaches that you're using in your day to day that are hindering your performance. They are keeping you from being in your optimal zone, that sweet spot of performance, productivity and profitability. And so procrastination is a big one. And I know we've talked about this topic before. I think we have, because I've told you about the poster that I love that hung in, and I can't find it. I have tried so hard to find it on the internet. It was it hung in the dance studio when I was younger. And uh, it was this ballerina leaning up against the bar, you know, with her tutu on and her point shoes and blowing this big bubble of gum and it, the caption said i'm not procrastinating i'm waiting for divine inspiration and i just love that right because sometimes we procrastinate because we don't quite have all the pieces yet i think some types of procrastination not to be used as an excuse but it can actually there's something that can you know just intuitively we know that we're missing a piece of the puzzle so for example, last year, I had, I had been working on this, this framework of continuum of challenges, and it just never quite felt right. It was, uh, I always use the word stress, obstacles, adversity, because I believe the stress is the thing, but that wasn't the right word. It was the, people call all of the stress, and the word tasks was what I needed to figure out. And I had a Saturday that I had booked to uh, plan an, an online program called Take Back Your Weekends. And by the way, the new book out on Tuesday uh, in paperback available on Amazon for pre-order right now. Um, anyway, I, per, I, I just, I couldn't get in the juju of it that day, right? I was just procrastinating and procrastinating and procrastinating. And then something happened at night. We had to go into the hospital. Actually, my mom was having an attack and a year later she's had an open heart surgery and she's all better now and on her on the path to healing. But that night, as we were in the hospital, and I think we were there from like 10 o'clock at night until they released us at four o'clock in the morning. And this was actually right before COVID when you were allowed to be in the hospital with somebody. And in the sitting there and just like pondering things, I found the word tasks, which made the entire domino just went and everything worked. And the next morning I got up, I went into uh, the office and I ended up filming the entire Take Back Your Weekends online course that is the foundation for the book and has become the foundation for everything. So in that case, the procrastination, I really truly believe was a, an intuition a knowing that I don't have all the pieces of the puzzle yet to do this to the best of its ability. Now, most procrastination though is not like that. So the way this problem solving framework works is we have to do situational awareness. Okay. Cause I can give you all the tips and techniques. So that was my point. We jump to solution activation first. 
And when we go to solution activation, we might miss a piece of the puzzle that will create a solution that will actually stick. So I've tried every technique, but if we don't do situational awareness and self-awareness before we dive into solution activation, I will guarantee you, you will not fix the procrastination problem. I can't guarantee that. I'm going to strongly suggest you won't actually get to where you want to go. Now, so let's build this out. So you've got to think of what are you procrastinating on, right? So think of, um, I think, so the first thing we want to ask is what is the real issue? Because so often we're thinking, okay, I'm procrastinating on this, but really it's about all of this. You know what I mean? Like what, what is the big piece of the puzzle? Then we want to look and say, what about this situation is within my control or out of my control? And when I say control, I don't necessarily mean controlling. I mean, I've like this sense of confidence and grounding and engagement, like the things that are, well, in this case, it's really like what is within my control. Okay. So my attitude, my, um, these elements, taking the first step to get this done, making a phone call, whatever the case may be, figuring out what's within your control. And then the thing that you're procrastinating on ask, is this a task, an obstacle or an adversity? And you can watch some of the other programs to really understand what that means, but essentially a task you do, an obstacle you solve, and an adversity you must heal. And based on that, when you know if it's a task, an obstacle, or an adversity, then we can look at it very objectively. Because if it's a task and you're procrastinating on a task, then what you're really doing is making the task take longer, right? If a task takes 15 minutes and you spend three weeks procrastinating on it, the truth is it took three weeks plus 15 minutes to actually complete the task. And so when we objectively see that that's happening, we can make a choice to say, oh my gosh, it's a 15 minute task. That's all I gotta do. I gotta just get it done. And you know, those tasks don't require emotion. We just gotta do them. And so that's the situational awareness getting really crystal clear. You may be procrastinating about a couple different things. Right? And getting them down on paper really makes it a lot easier. Then we dive into self-awareness. And let me tell you, this is my favorite part. Now, warning, self-awareness can flip very easily into criticism and self-judgment. And so we want to come at this from a place of compassionate curiosity, getting really curious about why am I procrastinating? What's going on here? Am I, you know, making this harder than it needs to be? Am I building stories around doing this job? I remember I, I gave a presentation to a group of senior managers at a bank and I got a call, you know, a few weeks later saying, so funny thing, heard you speak and I know it was about work, but I was thinking about my home life, <laughs> of course, because it's all intertwined. And she said, you know, I have had for years since we moved into this house, this back room that I pass every day that was just a bunch of boxes that we never went through, never got unpacked, and just like I procrastinated on it all the time. And I was like, okay, no problem. Uh, that's great. Is, you know, what are you thinking about that? And she said, you know what? But I listened to you because I realized it was just a task. And all I had to do was do the task. <laughs> and she's like, so we did it and it's done and she got it all sorted out in a weekend and I had somebody else who talked to me about that same thing with the office. So, so we, when we recognize our procrastination and we peel back the onion and we look at what is the actual thing I need to do and how long is it going to take me to do it, it makes it a lot easier. But then we want to add on the self-awareness. So physically, mentally, and emotionally, how am I responding? So let's take that, that you know, unorganized office or unorganized back room that you pass every day. That just like every time, and this one person, she said, you know, every time I passed it, I felt like, Ugh. you know, like it was just an annoyance and like a little dig into something that I'm not very successful because I'm not doing that thing. Anyway, so let's, let's unpack that self-awareness. So emotionally, are there things in those boxes that 
you know, your not wanting to deal with like maybe there's some heirlooms in there or some you know somebody who you love has died and there there are things and i emotionally i don't want to deal with it or maybe it represents part of your past life and you're just so done with that or you don't want to revisit those old memories could be anything right this is why self-awareness is so incredibly important in the discovery process so that we can solve the problem now that could be the emotional pull is it a mental pull? Are you just like creating this negative storyline? Like, oh, I shouldn't have to do that. You know, the rest of the family should help. Or I do everything else. Can they do that? Why are they not? Or could it be, it's going to take me so long. I just don't even know where to start. Or I'm so busy. I don't have time to do it. Well, you probably do, actually. Okay, so really getting clear about that. And then physically, like, is there... Uh, something emotional that's happening every time you walk by that. Is it that stamp of disapproval that you're going to give yourself anyway and it just reinforces it? That, you know, that, that sensation in the, um, in the body that you're like, Ugh. right? Like, notice that. Bring it to the surface. Be okay with it and just get really curious about what's happening and why are you procrastinating. That self-awareness piece is so fun to go down the rabbit hole. Like, why don't I actually want to do this? And sometimes the answer is fear. Probably not with your basement, or, you know, or your back room, but um, it could be, you know, like even we've talked on this, the lockdown lift-ups about it before, but it could be like with my book and all the launching and all of that, you know, they had, I had to uncover, oh, wait, I've had fear because I've done this before and it didn't go as I wanted it to go. And then I had to really dig into that and be like, oh, no, no, wait, that was just the training ground so that Take Back Your Weekends can be a really huge success, right? And it can be uh, something, I know all the pieces of the puzzle. And then I also had to do the self-awareness around the fact of, you know what, to me, day one, quote unquote, launch day is not what's important. What's important is getting it into the hands of people who are feeling stress and are unhappy and want to be able to do their work life and still have a life without guilt and without the frustration and without all the, the, the things that come with it. That's what's important. I unpack that. See, I was feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm procrastinating because I'm fearful of the big day. And now I'm like, yeah, who cares about the day? The day is not the important part. The long game is what's important. It's the lives I can change. And so that procrastination, that, that digging deep on why, the self-awareness, how am I reacting, potentially how am I making it harder than it needs to be. And that's the storyline that can be there, that can be anything. So looking at that, really having some fun with it. And then we can go into solution activation. But like if I said to you, okay, well, you know, procrastination and you want to do this one thing, well, just set some time and do it. But the truth is you have an emotional reaction to why you don't want to do it, then you're not going to do it anyway, right? Now you could force yourself, you could push yourself to do it, right? We've all mustered through, but I'm trying to get you to feel the flow and get the most important things done. And maybe the answer, by the way, the solution is hire out that tax. Maybe the self-awareness is figuring out, I don't like to do it. <laughs> like... I just hate doing X, right? And so hire somebody to do it if you have the means. And if not, barter with somebody for something else that you could offer value, they could offer value, whatever the case may be. So that is that next piece, right? And then, so we get into solution activation and this is where, uh, you know, so many things, like you can just look up Google, uh, different ideas for beating procrastination, but one of them is for sure, this is what I do a lot, is taking a big task and breaking it into the most granular level that you can, right? So I remember when I used to have a podcast, I would, it was like, there were all these things that had to happen, right? Like uh, artwork and recording and editing and intro extra and summary and blog post and posting and, you know, and I did most of it myself. I had some people who helped me, but I just, I 
generally like I knew where I wanted to cut in the edit and all of that. But I put podcast in my task circle and be like, oh, wonder why it's sitting there because it's going to take me two, two and a half hours. And then I realized, no, 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 put each individual task as sort of like an offshoot. I got to figure out how to do a whiteboard on this, but um, you would do it like, here, we'll do old school whiteboarding. So you'd have like podcast. Obviously I go over this in depth in my online program and the book. Take back your weekends, which you can buy anytime. Doesn't even have to be on Tuesday or before Tuesday, but if you did, awesome. Okay. So then go podcast. That's on the list. And I'd pull out here and go like art, you know, uh, edit, um, summary. I forget what all the thing. I don't do the podcast anymore, but like put it down here and like, this is going to take 10 minutes. This is going to take a little bit longer because it depends how long the thing is, but let's say 45 and the art's going to take 10 minutes and the uh, uploading is going to take, you know, 15, maybe not even that long. So then all of a sudden, if I have a window, I can like, you can do anything for 10 minutes. You can do anything for 15 minutes. You can do anything for five minutes. You pick your number that you can do anything for. Maybe it's one minute and I'm going to come on here. Well, these things are 10 minutes. So we're going to say 10. I've got 10 minutes. I'm going to do the art for the podcast. Check. Right. And so this is a lot more manageable to get through than this. And this is how I pull myself out of overwhelm a lot. Pull myself out of procrastination by doing this. Because the longer things on our list are not as easy. So even if you... Um, or anything is something else. So it's like if you had that back room, if we're using that example, you know, or cleaning out the basement. Okay. So you have that on your personal list. You're like, I got to get that basement done. Well, I'm going to say go like this, right? Um, put boxes together, right? Find all the, I don't know, chemicals, right? Like I just, like put like items with like, like make it as granular as you want. And then this is so much more motivating and you can create momentum by grabbing, you know, having that opportunity to put the big red check mark beside the things that I I'm getting done. And you see momentum, whereas this one, you're not going to get the check mark until it's all done. And that's less motivating. So that to me is the easiest way to overcome procrastination. So that's one way. Now, another thing is accountability. We really got to look at goals, deadlines, and accountability and how you're nurturing those and harnessing the power of that good stress, making friends with the stress to actually get something done. So you might, if you're really rewarded by getting things uh, done, like, or if you're like, okay, unless I do this, I'm not going to get ice cream then that works, that reward system. Now, the unfortunate thing is for me, I'd be like, oh, ice cream? <laughs> Why don't I get ice cream? Then I'll feel like doing the thing doesn't quite work that way. Um, that's uh, fun. Okay, I've got a couple comments here, so let's bring them up. Dan, hi, how are you? Uh, option paralysis, the tendency when presented with unlimited choices to do nothing. Exactly. And, you know, I, I it's almost like this, I, I would think that that's how people feel very overwhelmed, right? There's just too much to do. And, you know, one of the things I talk about in the new book is a couple of, like bucketing based on area of responsibility. So what hat are you wearing at that moment and ignoring everything else in the task circle, but only the task that you're focused on at that moment. And that takes mental discipline doing it this way. You don't have to, if you're working on this, you don't have to think about this, right? Like that's, that's the idea because you want to narrow in and be like really focused on the one thing which you can do for sure. Um, oh, I don't even know what I said. Okay. Let's go back up. Great topic. Do you find time blocking to attack these micro tasks to be more effective than setting arbitrary due dates? So it's interesting because time blocking, I, I have a different spin on time blocking. 
I, I think that we can do a whole segment on that if you want next week. Um, if you're going to time block, it needs to, well, no, let's just do a segment on that. I think time blocking is great. I think having accountability. So if you're so, oh, that's what I was, where I was at. If you're someone who feeds off of, I'm not going to do this reward until I finish this, then great, go for it. If you're someone like me that that doesn't work for, but what really works for me is letting somebody else know that I'm going to be doing X. And if I do X, then that like I'll hold myself accountable to somebody else, whether it's a client or a friend or a business coach or, you know, whoever, I mean, that's like pretty much my family, I guess. Right. Like, Hey, I'm going to do this. Hold me accountable to it. I guarantee you I'll get it done. So that, that for me has been a really good way. So look at that accountability and how you can put it in. So the smaller pieces, the accountability, the starting small going, all right, I'm going to do this for five minutes. I'm going to do it for 10 or I'm going to do it for 15. But here's the clincher. Some people do that and then they expect themselves to get motivation, motivated and then they're just going to keep riding the momentum. If that happens, two thumbs up, keep going, do the bigger task, right? Keep on it. If you do the 15 minutes, that's your actual commitment to yourself or to somebody else. So you don't have to keep going. If you get to the 15 minutes, the timer goes off and you're not feeling it, pause, right? Take your break, go shift your juju, do whatever you need to do and just own it, right? Like you did your 15 minutes, check, awesome, success, no judgment required. Go recharge and then set a time to come back and do the next 15 minutes, right? And you can chip away at that because I think like if you're going to spend an hour half-assing in a a project or a task that you don't really want to do, then if you spend the whole hour half-assing it, you're going to get less done than if you did 15 minutes all in, took a break and said, I'm going to do 15 minutes tomorrow or whatever day you end up doing and scheduling it in. You'll actually get more done with the intensity than you would with the uh, sort of lazying your way through. So there we go. Those are my thoughts today on overcoming procrastination using the problem solving framework. And obviously if you and I were working through a task, I would be able to ask you deeper questions about the self-awareness piece and the situational awareness, but that can happen so quickly, right? Like just, yeah, what's going on? Cause if we can name it, we can claim it. There's a, there's another rhyme for today. Um, little dance party. I need some music on my lives. I know I can do that. I haven't done it yet, but I could do it another time. All right, folks, I think I have rambled on a little riff on procrastination. My gosh, I love doing this every day. I like, I think this would be my nap time. This would be my downtime. If I, like, I rarely have meetings at three 15. I often have meetings at four o'clock, which is interesting. And uh, I just love getting to come here and riff and share. And if there's somebody else who you think would benefit from this, I, I invite you to share the link with them and let them know that I am, uh, I'm here doing, doing lockdown lift up every day, uh, Monday through Thursday, 3.15 p.m. Eastern. On that note, I will see you on Monday afternoon. And until then, have the absolute best day and the best weekend. Bye for now.